the brand new thermal monocular from FLIR. This is the FLIR Breeze. Check it out. Baking pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Take some bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. All right, y'all, welcome back. This is Hans East, Texas. We're switching things up a little bit. Uh, this week, we're doing a review, and uh, this is on the, the FLIR Breach PTQ-136, and this is the thermal monocular that really had a lot of buzz going at the SHOT Show this past January. A lot of people have been calling, asking about it, really uh, because of the size. This is one of the, therm uh, the smallest thermal monoculars around, uh, and if you take a look at it, just, uh, I mean, it's, it's, you know, about the size of my palm, and uh, which is different than a lot of thermal monoculars that you've seen out there. But you're going to get a chance to look through it. We're going to look around it. You're going to get to see the, the features and the specs. And then when you come back at the end, uh, you get to, he get to hear what I what I like about it, what I don't like about it, uh, and where you can find this. But my good friends over at Outdoor Legacy Gear gave me a, a chance to use this. I've had it for the last few weeks. I've used it a lot. I've run a lot of batteries through it. This uh, uh, unit runs off of one of the CR123A batteries. Uh, you can get a couple hours of battery life out of it. Um, but when we come back, I'm going to tell you what I like about it and who this might be great for. So check out right now the features and specifications. All right, now I'm going to go through and show you the features and specifications of the FLIR Breach. And you can do that straight from the Outdoor Legacy Gear website. This is a little bit different than what I've done in past review videos. But I want to give you a chance to not just look at the specs here uh, in writing. But if you're trying to re research or find out any information on any thermal scope, this is a great tool to do so. And just to see it firsthand and for yourself when you go to the outdoor legacy gear website you search FLIR breach brings you right down here to the unit uh, as you can see this the FLIR breach the model number is PTQ 136 uh, price is at 24.95 it is in stock and you can see here has the zoom option so you can kind of look in and see if you're looking to mount uh, on something you can see the different mounts you can flip this image around and get a, a closer look at, at the FLIR breach itself just with this little window but when you're going through and you're looking at the specs, and I, there's a, a lot of different features and specifications on here, uh, and I'm going to leave this up, and I'm going to talk and highlight a, a few of them that I, that I look at and that I think are important to the people that ask questions to me when they're asking about different thermal units. The first thing is, uh, this is a 320 by 240 resolution unit. Um, it has a 60 hertz refresh rate, and also... Uh, onboard video recorder so it's an internal video recorder uh, it takes still images and video this is great for people that like to video hunts or like to video uh, people that they're hunting with you know to, to capture that third person image and uh, very easy I've used this uh, feature a lot works great easy to use uh, and really a, a no worry type of feature also uh, there's seven different uh, color palettes you can look down here, there's white hot, black hot, rainbow, iron bow, sepia, arctic, and outdoor alert. You're going to get a chance to look at those here um, through the unit itself, and you'll be able to get to see those different color palettes. Uh, another thing is uh, this um, unit weighs less than 8 ounces, which when you're talking about having the ability to mount this on a helmet or a different type of head mount, uh, that means a lot. You want to make sure, obviously, that this is uh, as lightweight as possible so it's not weighing down the front of that helmet and pulling it down over your eyes. So here's a list of the features. Again, you can find this on the Outdoor Legacy Gear website. You can scroll through. You can also read reviews, the description, uh, some review videos that have been made about this and different images. But this is a great resource, not just for this unit, like I said, but for any type of thermal scope or night vision scope that you're looking uh, to purchase. But now, after looking at the, uh, the features and specifications, we're gonna look through the FLIR breeze itself.
All right, y'all, so you've seen the features, you've seen the specifications, you've seen through the scope, you've seen the images. I'm gonna let you know a little bit of what, what I like about the unit uh, and who might uh, be interested in something like this. If you're looking for a thermal monocular, there's a lot of choices out there. So really the big thing, this is gonna be great for a couple different types of people that are looking to get into some type of thermal monocular. Uh, really, the first thing that I, that I love about this unit is, is the size. I've used thermal monoculars in the past. Uh, they've, they've been pretty big. Uh, and so what I find is when I'm going out to set up on a shot, a shot I'm using my thermal monocular. Uh, I set up my tripod. Then I'm fumbling around trying to find a spot for my, for my thermal monocular, either trying to put it in a bag or put it on the ground where I don't step on it. The great thing about this and where I've found this most useful is this thing is so small that I can uh, spot with it, I can set up for my shot and then quickly slip this into my pocket. Uh, and it's it's very easy. I can slip it in all my pockets. I don't have to worry about where I left it on the ground or trying to find it or, or put it in a bag. That's really one of the biggest uh, positives about this thing is just the size, the overall size. Now uh, it gets a, a, a good uh, thermal resolution, a good image. You saw some of the images of some, you know hogs, uh, some deer at 50 yards or so. So you, you can definitely identify, I'd say you can identify for about 200 yards away. You can identify clearly uh, what type of animal it is at 200 yards away. Um, so also another thing that uh, positive that I think people are, you know, that are looking specifically at this are, are going to like is the fact that it can be helmet mounted. So if you're a helmet wearer, uh, if you're looking for a unit to mount on your helmet, this has several different places that brackets that you can mount on your helmet different angles when you if you have to mount it sideways the screen will flip around uh, into the view that you're looking so if you have it on sideways it'll flip around if you got it upside down it'll flip around so it doesn't matter which way you mount it it's got mounts on on uh, three of the four sides to be able to uh, mount this on a helmet so if you're looking for a helmet mount this is going to be great for you you can check them out over at outdoorlegacygear.com and I know Jason over there, he'll be able to help you out and, and uh, find out for sure if this is something that you know would work for you or maybe you might be leaning towards a different uh, thermal monocular. But those are really the, the positives that I found about it. Really, the only thing that I, uh, I wouldn't even call it a dislike, but you know, if you're looking at thermal monoculars and size doesn't matter to you or mounting it on a helmet doesn't matter to you, you can find a thermal monocular out there with a better thermal image. Um, there are, you know, uh, Pulsar makes them, uh, you know, that have a better thermal image. Uh, so if, if the size, uh, having it as small as possible doesn't matter to you, or and maybe spending a little bit more money, you can definitely find a, uh, a different thermal monocular that has a little bit better th thermal resolution, it has a little bit better picture. Um, but like I said, if you're looking for something small to slip in your pocket while you're hunting, like I am, like I love, and if you're looking for something that you can mount on a helmet, this is going to be perfect for you. This is the Fleer Breach PTQ-136. Those are my likes and dislikes. Uh, again, you got to see around it. You got to see the features and the specifications through the Outdoor Legacy Gear website. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave a comment in the description below uh, underneath the video. I'm going to put a link to this unit uh, in the description of the video so you can check it out and go and look for yourself. Um, but as always, I appreciate you watching. Uh, we're going to do, I've got so many more review videos coming up to do on different uh, thermal and night vision uh, scopes and monoculars. So this is one that has, has had a lot of buzz. This is, again, the Flare Breach PTQ-136. Uh, and if you are in the market for a thermal monocular, and again, you're looking at size, you're looking at mounting on a helmet, give Jason a call over, to, over at Outdoor Legacy Gear. He'll be able to let you know and, and help you and find out if this is something that uh, is going to be a right fit for you. So as always, I appreciate you checking me out, checking out the videos. We're going to get back to killing hogs soon. Had Jason uh, from Outdoor Legacy Gear out not that long ago. Uh, we had a hunt together. I've been uh, chasing these hogs all over East Texas, all over the woods. And as always, man, I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, click on the videos. If you like it, that's great. If you have a comment, I'm, I think I'm pretty good about getting back to any comments that I get. But I appreciate you watching. We're going to get back to it. Y'all keep making them bacon pancakes, y'all. And if you haven't already, please check out the Late Night Vision Show podcast. Uh, I'll put a link in to that as well. We're talking about all things thermal. Uh, you'll be able to check out and hear things about the breach, about all different types of thermals. But that's a podcast that Jason and I started uh, about a month ago. We've A lot of people have been tuning in. We were 
pleasantly surprised about all the people that were tuning in for the Late Night Vision po Show podcast. And uh, we're going to have guests on. We've got a guest this week coming up. So y'all check that out as well. And uh, y'all take care. Thank you. And uh, keep making them bacon pancakes, y'all.